Coming up, are you hungry? Well, good. We're talking about quick service dining at Universal City Walk. From our houses in and around Central Florida, this is the Universal Edition of the Diz Unplugged. This is episode 263 of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. The Diz Unplugged Universal Edition is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect universal vacation. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. I'm your host, Craig Williams. Today, I'm joined alongside by my co-host, Rhino. Hello. Hi, thanks for being here. Hi. Yes, thank you for having me. Love that you're here. Love that I'm here too, right in my own house. Very good, yes. Very convenient. What we're talking about today, as I already said, we're talking about quick service dining, specifically at Universal City Walk. And you might wonder, why are we talking about that? Rhino might have even wondered, because I didn't share it with him. But maybe I'll make him guess. Rhino, why are we talking about that today? Um, more stuff's opening? Well, not necessarily that more stuff is opening. Uh, A lot of City Walk is pretty much open. I mean, I I know in terms of the the quick service options, I want to say the only thing that isn't open yet is potentially Menchie's and Breadbox. Hmm. Because I know the, the fast food area has reopened. And Hot Dog Hall of Fame's reopened. They're listing hours for the sushi place, but I feel like the sushi is always a question mark of whether or not it's actually open anyway. So I don't know if we can I don't know if we can say whether or not it's ever open, but uh, Cold Stone's open, Starbucks is open, Red Oven is open. Of course, Voodoo Donut is open. So uh, we just did the show. So thank you for watching, listening. Make sure you subscribe <laughs> and we'll be back again next week. I kid, I kid. Uh, this, but wh- Wait, so, w- um, okay, then I am really confused about what we're doing today. Because this <laughs> list of things you sent me said bread box. That's why I was like, oh. Though this is all the, div- the list I sent you was all of the, the restaurants at mm. Universal City Walk that are considered quick service. And gotcha. Rhino was kind of right in this. So, w- The reason we're going to talk about this today is because with all of the new dining implementations put into implemented into place, I'm going to say that all of the dining implementations that have been implemented, have implementing (laughs) of the implementation of the implements. Thank you very much. That that's exactly (laughs) what I meant to say. Uh, All of all of those uh, rules and safety measures, protocols that they've put into place have it made quick service dining to me be even more essential in places. That is nothing against the full service dining options. You know, it's it's again like visiting theme parks. It's all based on whatever you're most comfortable with. I personally, I am kind of skeeved out by going and sitting inside of a restaurant and eating, and so I'm not I'm not quite there yet. And even outside, I'm kind of weary. I like I like I said weary. I'm leery on it. I would prefer for me, I would prefer to go options still for the most part. And at least in in a sense of that way, like taking it to go where I feel comfortable. So there's a couple of places I'd feel comfortable eating like at at uh, Islands of Adventure. Like if I could take my food from from three broomsticks and take it outside on the back patio and know that I'm completely away from everyone else, that'd be that'd be OK with me. But. Other other places where you're kind of squished inside, not really my thing. But uh, all that all that aside, you know, with with quick service restaurants, a lot of them offer mobile ordering when available, and and it's just with the quick service places, a lot of the seating is actually outside and stuff. It's just it's easier to do quick service options right now. And City Walk is actually it's a little lacking when it comes to I should say I shouldn't say good quick service, but quick service that you might actually want. But it's still worth going over everything that is there in terms of quick service. So did I explain that thoroughly enough, Rhino? I, I understood it. Okay. <laughs> then I will I will take that as a 
is an okay job done. So why don't we start with like breakfast? Let's start with, you know, that's the first meal that you're hitting when you're getting into uh, Universal Orlando first thing in the morning. Some of the places there obviously offer breakfast as part of that. And the first one you're going to hit is actually Starbucks. Of course, Starbucks being open all day. I don't know what there is to say about a Starbucks that hasn't been said before. It offers coffees. It offers teas. It offers uh, drinks that you think are coffee, but are actually just sugar blended up in a cup and served with a fun name on top of it. Uh, They have the finest of frozen breakfast sandwiches that they Mm -hmm. rapid heat in an oven that usually the inside still remains cold while you are eating the outside and it's actually burnt to a crisp. Scientists are still trying to figure out how that's possible, why they can't heat a sandwich perfectly throughout. But it's called the hot pocket effect. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> That's exactly it. <laughs> it's also it also would happen when you would be like making pizza bagels as a kid. Yes, yeah. And you would try to load them up on a plate to put in the microwave, and the ones on the outside would all be burnt to a crisp, and then the one that you placed right in the middle of the plate would be perfectly cooked. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, well, breaking my teeth chewing through the rest <laughs> of them, but it's fine. It's fine for that one good one. But you know what? Technically, with all that being said, Starbucks is an option for some sandwiches, for some pastries, for your midday coffee drink. And I, while I don't really, but I don't really utilize Starbucks, mostly because I don't like drinking hot coffee in the in the middle of the day when it's 90 degrees outside or even 80 degrees outside. I'm a coffee first thing in the morning and and before I leave the house and then I'm done with it, it's still an option for you. Rhino likes the the teas there. So, yeah, I'm really just like if somebody else is going in, I might go in. But I always Starbucks is one of those things where I always am like I want to have a drink here that I love, but I can never find one. Yeah. But I know drinks aside that the next place we're going to talk about the next uh, breakfast style option still open all day, but uh, a, a place to get a snack at or breakfast item or late night snack. You've got Cinnabon. That's right. You remember that one time you were driving and yeah, you hit a rest station and there was the smell of sweet sugar and cinnamon in the air and you saw that Cinnabon. Well, you can get it at Universal City Walk. You can probably get it at a lot of airports, too. (laughs) I was going to say, remember the mall in 1994 when you were on your way to Leechmere? (laughs) That's where you'd find a Cinnabon. (laughs) Such like I'm not I'm not making fun of Cinnabon. Cinnabon is delicious. It's just one of those concepts that I feel like it's so outdated at this point in time that like, I I don't know. I'm not judging anyone for Cinnabon and liking Cinnabon, but I just I don't I don't get it. Listen, we it. all we all know it's it, where it's where it's at is Auntie Anne's. That's where it's at for me. When we talk about stuff where you're like, oh, thank God this still exists. Whenever you yeah. see it, you're like, it's always pops up right when you need that one thing where you're like, I need a snack. But do I need a snack? Oh, wait, I need a pepperoni pretzel. Yeah. Well, there you go. So Cinnabon is the Auntie Anne's of cinnamon rolls. And hey. Speaking of Annie Ann's, there's also an Auntie Ann's at, at Universal City Walk, directly across from the last breakfast place we'll talk about. So if you feel like uh, if you feel like you need a pretzel for breakfast or a pretzel for lunch or a pretzel for dinner, pretzels anytime, pizzas in a pretzel, cinnamon Is this a sugar. Dr. Seuss pretzel book? <laughs> like pretzel description. I uh, that's uh, what that's how they should market themselves. Where on the a doc- train? <laughs> on a on a boat? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, they could they could do it. But yeah, any ants is in City Walk. Always a good option for a snack slash pretzel on the go. You know, you can also find them in the parks, too, if you need to. But have it right there in City Walk. And then that last place we're going to talk about, obviously, Voodoo Donut. I think the first thing that we can talk about with context without just glazing right over. I love me some Voodoo Donut still. Is it is it open in the morning? Yes. OK, right. Yeah. Right. Last, because last time we were there, it didn't open a four, so that's why I didn't know yeah. if it was a. We were, uh, yeah. The last time we were there, we were still in that area before everything. City Walk was still kind of in its later opening phase and hadn't shifted into its early open phase. And now City Walk's open from the current hours as of recording this. 
I believe are 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Of course, that could change. Um, Some stuff is not open, obviously, that entire time. A lot of stuff opens up at 11 to 10, but things are still changing with this. But like this list, not everything will necessarily be open at all times while right now while it's in the state it is but uh these are the options that are available and if you're watching this like five six months from now chances are everything is open and in full availability at least that's what we're hoping is the way everything uh is going with it and keeping the fingers crossed on here but voodoo donut i mean come on it was i've now had them twice yeah any time of day yeah (laughs) i'll take it and not twice as a whole. I've had plenty of Voodoo Donut in my life like, now. Twice since it's been bra- reopened, I've gotten it. And Bragging about your two times you've gone in your life to Voodoo Donut. <laughs> I've been twice, so you know it's good. Listen, we, uh, according to most of the comments, I am the most arrogant, uh, self-appointed person on the Diz that is holier than thou above everyone else. So I want to make sure everyone knows two things. One, I've been to Voodoo Donut twice <laughs> and number two i have been to paris i was so. gonna ask if you'd been to paris because i'm not sure if we were we were clear on that yet. Uh, and for people who are confused by that that would be a uh a call back to some of our watch parties that we've done so not necessarily this show but it's a good time but yeah what's your what's your favorite donut at voodoo donut right now oh it's a you know it's a tough one i like um uh, what's the fritter with the peanut butter and the, is that ODP? That's not, that's not that one, but that's. ODP is the donut that has yes. the Oreo with the peanut butter. Okay. Yeah. The Texas mafia, I think is the yes, one that that's has it. the peanut butter. That one's good. I'm not going to lie. I really enjoyed the universal exclusive one. That was like the creamsicle, the orange creamsicle that was on the stick. I told like, you. Yeah. yeah. That was really, it was very refreshing. It was I like told you. light and I, I I don't know. I'm kind of actually craving that one specifically again. Yeah, because like that the orange creamsicle one, like the orange flavor is on the outside, and then in the middle, it's just it's like straight cream. It's like, like a Bavarian, Bavarian. Cream, yeah, yeah. And so it is very very tasty. It, it's very it is. It, it, I found it to be a little bit heavy. Like I ate the full thing, and I was like, I don't need to eat dinner now. But it was still delicious i even like you you mentioned the peanut butter fritter i like their apple fritter that they Mm. do we've had two of those uh it is what we've been doing with that is when we buy it we cut it in half like and we each have one half of it but we save it for breakfast then heat it in the microwave for like 15 seconds and it is the greatest breakfast pastry in the world then at that point and uh, i also i've I think those are those are my highlights right now. I had their yeah. old fashioned donut the last time I was there. It was a solid donut. I the mean, no thrills, one was but, good. Yeah, but it was. It's like I can get a blueberry donut at Dunkin' Donuts, you know. And yeah. I do love Dunkin' Donuts. Don't but get me wrong. the Dunkin' Donuts are all frozen and then reheated. There's something about a fresh donut. I don't want to hear it. It's something about a fresh donut. Well, I can't get a butter crunch donut anywhere except for at Dunkin' Donuts, unfortunately. Yeah, I do. I want to try the uh, retro 30th anniversary donut that Voodoo put out. But to me, it was kind of it seemed a little bit no thrills. Like, I know people love it. The design on it. It kind of looks like the classic Universal Studios logo. So I haven't had it yet to take a picture of it. So that's why we're not showing it if you're watching it. But which one I, is this? It's they released it on Friday, oh, so it wasn't oh, there yeah. when we got it, but the it day was, after, and I was like, I would have got this. <laughs> yeah, and but ultimately, it's a uh, it's the same. It's a yeast donut with raspberry filling inside, and then it's they like they have the chocolate on top, so that way it's dark to do the the retro design. And so to me, it doesn't even sound that delicious. I don't like raspberry filled donuts. I don't like fruit filled. I like cream filled donuts. Yeah, me uh, too. And I'm a I'm a chubby boy. We've got to get off Voodoo Donut. I could talk Boston about Cream any day. Boston Cream. Boston oh, Cream. All day, all night. But uh, moving into snackage territory, let's talk about snackage that you can get at Universal City Walk. Uh, back there by Starbucks, hidden behind the escalators, you're going to find a Cold Stone Creamery. So I, I really hope that I don't have to sit here and explain what Cold Stone Creamery is. But then again, if you're 
you're not from a place that has a cold stone in the mall or as a standalone store, you might not know. So it's just the cold slab, marble slab ice cream that uh, you choose what you want. They can put all the toppings inside and then they'll mix it up on the, the cold marble slab right in front of you and give it to you in a cup or cone. And you've got your your food. Ice cream. <laughs> Birthday cake remix is where it's at. I uh, I was always usually very basic in it. If it was a day where they were serving the banana ice cream, I would get cheesecake pieces and uh, cheesecake pieces and graham cracker crust, and I would mix it in. So it would be like a banana cream cheese nightmare concoction, and then if it was uh, if it was if I got just the mint Oreo or the mint one that they had all day, I would usually just crush Oreos in it and do mint Oreo ice cream before. Like it felt like mint Oreo ice cream was a thing you could get in every grocery store. Now they've made it they've made it unnecessary to get it there. But uh, the other the other kind of snackage that you can have for that ice cream treat in the day got mint cheese and cheese mm-hmm. frozen yogurt. So uh, I I still like mint cheese. So I'm a fan. Yeah, it's frozen yogurt weighed by the ounce. So you get your big cup and and then you you put it in the cup and put as much toppings as you want in there. Careful with that fruit and the heavier toppings. That'll that'll really get that price skyrocketing quick. But it's it's good. It's good frozen yogurt. I'm not going to complain about it. So I would eat there. Yes. OK. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay, so let's move into the last of this, which is the food places. Of course, you're probably going to go here for either lunch and or dinners. The first place we'll just mention, and just because, uh, again, I, th- I don't know if I ever see this open. Maybe I'm just not looking hard enough, but the Fusion Bistro Sushi and Sake Bar that's right outside of the theater exit on the second floor of city walk. I, I, I feel like one time I've seen a person standing in there, but it felt like they were getting ready to open. And then an hour later, they just weren't there. And who knows, but I, it's like a rare, like I think I saw somebody sitting at the counter once and I'm like, is it open or is somebody just sitting there? Like, I don't know. Yeah. It's very, very confusion. It's but, elusive. Oh, <laughs> I said confusion. It's yeah. confusion. I, I I'm totally for uh, sushi and sake bar. I feel like the problem is, though, it's just this little setup on that top floor of City Walk with not a lot of seating right around it. I wish they would actually, like, give it the justice it deserves. Like, you know, cowfish, half of what they're trying to serve is like sushi on top of the top of the burgers and sandwiches and stuff. And that gets a big, giant building. Like You're telling me that they can't find a nice area to really dedicate it to some good sushi and, and, and good, uh, good fusion, Asian fusion cuisine. So I know, I know there's a little bit of that over at Royal Pacific, but we should be able to have it in city walk in a more dedicated area. But that's just my two cents. I think Rhino would agree with me. Oh, I love sushi. I, I, I front and center front and center. I, I know you do. So and that's why I think it's also insulting that inside the fast food express area, kind of on the opposite side of the upstairs section of City Walk, then you have the, the fast food headquarters where uh, one of the options inside there is the Panda Express, which it's like that, that's another one. Like, I would love to see a really well done Chinese restaurant concept in City Walk, or I would like it to see it fused in with the, like I said, with an Asian fusion restaurant, kind of mm. like Bento. Maybe just build a Bento inside yeah. there. Oh, that would be great. I would love that. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't want to drive to to I, do I two just... miles down the road to Bento when I could have it right at City Walk. Yeah, well, and it's just like I don't know. It's not that I don't like. I'm not knocking Panda Express or anything like that. It's just like. There's a drive through one right over here. So it just feels so basic for me. I don't know. It's also, I'm not knocking it. You know, like I would never knock any of the Chinese food restaurants inside of a mall or anything like that. But it feels like that old mall type of Chinese food. I don't know. Oh, yeah. No, I, but that's the problem. It's not, there's no level of authenticity to it. But at the same time, every now and then you just get in a mood for orange chicken. 
from Panda Express and you're like, yeah, just load me up with some orange chicken and fried rice and I'm good to I'll, go. I like the sweet fire one because that's like, good, too. Mm, yeah. yeah. And, no, I, I it's listen, I still go to Panda Express. I I just it's every now and then you just kind of want it. And I still haven't found that. Chinese food place that I I want to return to over by where I live now. So it's like, I don't, we make a lot of Chinese food at home, but when I want something quick out every now and then I'll, I'll grab it. But it's, it's, I I ate it a lot when I was a universal employee because with our discount, we'd go over after work when cigars was still there, right? Where the bread box is now we would get a big Bud Light for, 375 it was like a 32 ounce bud light for 375 and and then we'd get one of the fast food places i usually only got panda or moe's and so we would pretty much have have like a full good meal for under ten dollars with a massive beer and and a little bit of uh a little bit of fast food and that was a way to keep the bills down there used to be an all you can eat one on iDrive for like 10 bucks oh yeah, my friend like brought me to it once, and I was like, "This is quite the discovery." <laughs> <laughs> like, I loved it. No, that's the American dream. So, <laughs> uh, but I already mentioned it. So then there's Moe's inside inside that fast food section as well. Too, of course, Moe's is a uh, it's a burrito place similar to Cadoba or or Chipotle. For people who know those, but maybe not Moe's, because I don't I don't know how far Moe's extends to. It's an Atlanta based restaurant. I'm not sure where it has traveled to around the country in places it's that I have been, very but. big where I live right now. Like they popped up a ton of them over there. My cousin is obsessed with it. Like he all he asked for for Christmas was Moe's gift certificate. So he ended up with like three hundred dollars in Moe's gift certificate. I I mean, I liked I liked Moe's a lot for a while, and then I just got bored with their selections. It just I like Chipotle better. Yeah, for me, Moe's got to the point where I just felt like to make it taste like I wanted to, I had to make it really unhealthy. Whereas, like if I went to Chipotle, I feel like I could just load it up on the peppers and onions and black beans, and I, you know, with a lot of times they get just straight vegetarian stuff at Chipotle for me, and. If you know me, vegetarian is not really uh, is not really a moniker that I'd ever I'd ever not throw on myself. House. But yeah. uh, that's a that's saying a lot about the the toppings and such from places like that. If I can just eat vegetables and be happy, but yeah, but Moe's is in there. I mean, it's it's well priced. It's conveniently priced. You know, you can you can have a nice big portion of food for ten bucks and and good queso and it's i i have i have nothing to say knock and mose it's just another one where it's it is this is part of the mall food court of <laughs> universal city walk so if yeah you, you really want a burrito it's a good option for a burrito or nachos just nachos i would actually just go to margaritaville and get nachos but that's just me uh, yeah you can't get margaritaville everywhere right I think 99 cities out of 100 have a Margaritaville at this point. <laughs> I was just, yeah, I said it and then I was like, wait, can you? <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> We're not going to go down that avenue. I'm sure they're all out there. And the final place in the uh, in the fast food section there, of course, is the the BK Whopper Bar, the Burger King Whopper Bar, which is just I don't. This is it's where I draw the line on it. I it's a Burger a King. Where you just get to stack whatever whatever toppings you want on your on your whopper instead of getting what just comes with it. And I just I, I don't get it. It's pay a couple extra bucks and go to NBC Sports Grill and Brew or the Cowfish or Tusome or literally any other place that has hamburgers and don't go to a Burger King on vacation. <laughs> I, I mean, unless you're like really wanting to try the Impossible Whopper, I don't know. <laughs> That's I, all I could think. <laughs> I don't even know if they serve that at the BK Whopper Bar. It's not going to be good as good as the regular Whopper, anyway. I don't. Don't, <laughs> don't be. Don't be. Don't be pulled in. Don't and be. I like Burger King. It's just I like Burger King in a way. What? If it's like, oh, I'm really. I'm really hungry and I'm on a road trip and I want to stop for it. If well, I that's see, yeah, yeah. 
if I see a Burger King, I'll stop at a Burger King there. But it's like if I'm at a place like City Walk, I'll pay the couple extra dollars and go and have a big, massive burger that's not cooked with frozen meat and and such. I want to I want to have it the the best way I can be. I don't even know if Burger King uses frozen meat. I'm assuming it does. So I'm not I'm I not think, knocking I think. Them. I thought Wendy's was the only one that like did, and I don't know though. I, I don't know. Listen, it's still I. Maybe they don't. None of them do anymore. Who knows? Burger King's my favorite. Of if we're talking McDonald's, Burger King, or Wendy's, I'm I'm Burger King all day. I'll just say that. So it's again some of the fondest meals of my life. I can remember growing up eating them at Burger King, not the Golden Arches. Some families of Burger King family, some but families McDonald's family. It's, then you got those weirdos at Wendy's. It was the McDonald's. It was they had the onions on their their cheeseburgers and burgers. Uh, yeah. I don't. Ugh. When McDonald's, you're a kid, you, don't. you go to McDonald's to get the chicken nuggets. You go to Burger King to get a Whopper Junior, and you go to Wendy's for the Junior bacon cheeseburger, the frost and the frosty. Come on. Oh, see, for Burger King, for me, it wasn't. I actually like their chicken tenders that they used to do over mcdonald's uh chicken nuggets and chicken mcnuggets sorry trademarked and (laughs) i would i would just get i liked that they had the sesame seed bun top it burger bun and i would just get a plain ketchup and uh ketchup and mustard on uh either a hamburger or a cheeseburger i was a very plain child and uh, sound like my brother (laughs) hey i grew up i grew up and now i like better things it's still good, but I like I like things that are a little bit more adventurous. I shouldn't say better. Like the double whopper. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, anytime I see that the rodeo burger that was the tie in that they did with with um, small soldiers back in the day. I'm, oh, gosh, I am all for it. And Burger King way back in the, the 90s, they did a Simpsons special where they had a a frosty that was special colored to like celebrate uh Treehouse of horror back in the day. Oh. And, and I even remember when Burger King used to put out Disney toys. So I, I can remember sitting in the Burger King and eating, eating and playing with my Disney toys there. So, uh, gosh, wow. What a trip down memory lane for Burger King. <laughs> this has been our Burger King podcast. This is literally the most irrelevant episode that we will ever put out. <laughs> like, like what a, I, I, this will be, all the comments will just be about like the reviews are going to be spoke too long about whoppers <laughs> I, it really is it's gonna be i came here to hear about the restaurant and these guys devolved for five minutes over burger king <laughs> tried to plan my family vacation now we all we know is about whoppers <laughs> <laughs> stopped it's, episode and what hey hey Sponsored by Burger King. No, I wish <laughs> they should sponsor this episode for that reason. At the very least, send us a ten dollar gift card. We'll mention you every episode, uh, as long as you're paying for my Impossible Whopper. Now, I will mention you all the time. So, oh heck yes, Rhino. What's the best? Uh, what's the best sister food you could have to the hamburger? What do you ham think? soup? Ham soup. <laughs> It's my sister who makes it. It's a hot water with a smack of ham. A ham um, hawk? <laughs> no, it's Arrested Development. Was the, is that what's in it? I don't know. So. The sister, you said is the sister thing and his buster's sister makes the soup for him and it's just hot water with a boiled ham. <laughs> That's in it right. I forgot. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Hmm. <laughs> with a smack of ham. Um, what's the sister food to Burger King? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Dairy Queen. No, I. I oh, really I didn't meant, know if it was a riddle. Okay, I, I meant uh, in terms of that. I meant the sister food is uh, you know you have hamburgers. What's the other food that complements it well? I would sandwiches. say sandwiches. Oh, hot dogs. <laughs> hot well, how dogs. do you want me to take the picture? Hamburger. Oh, whoops, hamburger or hot dog? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. That's, yeah. I never heard that description before. I don't know if I understand it, but cool. I only recently heard it. I don't know if it was Carly or somebody that said it, and I can't stop thinking about it. And um, so, yeah, Hot Dog Hall of Fame. There you go. Yeah, Hot Dog Hall of Fame. Uh, Another place that is uh, just around the corner from the Universal Studios store and such. And uh, it's it's a place for hot dogs hot dogs so good hot dogs i mean not not all great if you watched our review from the last time that we ate there way way back i mean oh we didn't have uh 
We didn't have a great experience there. Yours, you did not care for yours. The vegetarian one I had yeah. there once too is disgusting. That was the review I was I was referring to. Um, I don't remember what I had. I think I was just middle of the road with my choice though. But overall, I, I still like Hot Dog Hall of Fame. It's again, it's a fair price for. I feel like you get a good portion of hot dogs with your with your side and you know what it's it's what you make of it at the end of the day it's a hot dog place it's just you have the you have the choice to elevate it and make it more than just a hot dog you have it you have a chance to make it a true experience this has been our serenade to hot dogs yes why aren't there more hot dog fast food places i mean why don't more fast food places carry hot dogs that's the thing didn't burger king not to bring it back to burger king but didn't burger king start the hot dog thing i don't know i feel like Dairy Queen came out of my nose and that we're gonna have to edit this part out i'm not doing that i feel like oh, dairy I, I, queens I, where you go for <laughs> dairy queens where you go for if you want a hot dog at i mean it has to be a brazier it's got to be the the brazier with the actual food and such and it. it can't just be a can't be your standalone Dairy Queen. I don't know if many places have standalone Dairy Queens anymore. So I I that was the only one we had close to us when I was growing up was a standalone. So I didn't even realize for the longest time that you could get hot dogs and in other food and chicken tenders at a Dairy Queen. So but I feel like it's an option that more places should have. I love a good hot dog. Oh, it's my favorite. When you go to like a uh, an event of some sort, like a concert or something like that, there is nothing I like more than like when the hot dog comes wrapped up in tinfoil. Yeah, that's not bad. That's not it's a it's 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 a good ballpark food. Like one of the you know, you can one of the best ways to tell if you're at a good ballpark is with a good hot dog. I should say I'm lying halfway about that. There are multiple fast food restaurants that I just realized, and I feel ashamed for it, is that you can get hot dogs, of course, if you're in the Atlanta area at the Varsity. What do you have? And a nice chili dog there. And also uh, my one of my hometown restaurants at Skyline Chili in the, in the Cincinnati, greater Cincinnati area. You can get uh, Coney dogs there. So chili, cheese, add some onions on top, a little bit of hot sauce. You cannot go wrong with that. So there are plenty of places out there where you can get uh, a hot dog at. If you're at the Orlando International Airport, of course, in the Delta Terminal, the the one that's about 30 years behind every other terminal, you can get good old fashioned uh, Nathan's hot dogs at the counter. Mm-hmm. So any any chance Rhino and I get to really talk down about the Delta Terminal at at Orlando International Airport, we will take the opportunity to because it is the it's absolute garbage. worst. <laughs> Human garbage. <laughs> it's just, it's like I expect to see a lot of uh, business people with shoulder pads out there <laughs> at the Bahama Smoking Breeze. Inside. Yeah. <laughs> Having a smoke on the indoor patio like they used to in my mall where I grew up. And you'd be like, this is still smoking inside. Uh, They're on the patio. Oh, goodness. Okay. Well, <laughs> Once again, we have devolved as we've been going through here. So let's get through these last couple ones. We did Hot Dog Hall of Fame. So I guess we will go to uh, Breadbox. Breadbox. Because what what is the sister? sister <laughs> what is the, what is the once removed second cousin of a hot dog? Listen, <laughs> a sandwich. <laughs> it, is a hot dog a sandwich? I mean, it isn't bread, right? But is a, is a hot dog a sandwich or is a sandwich a hot dog? Well, a sandwich is, says the hot dog is the meat. A sandwich is a qualification, whereas a hot dog is a specific thing. Listen, so does the hot dog belong in the family of sandwich? Historians have been trying to figure this out for years. Have you not yourself had a hot dog on one slice of bread in your life because your mother had no hot dog buns in your house or you were an irresponsible adult and let them get moldy before you ate the hot dog? Uh, I will eat them plain before I put them on bread. I don't believe I've ever had it on bread before. What? You lay it diagonally and you roll it up like no. it's a little diaper for the hot dog. You, <laughs> <And then> you- <laughs> think about it. You know Chris Williams. Chris Williams, would <laughs> she would rather buy an entire brand new thing of hot dog buns. Like we would go to our little, our little, we called it the little store. It's a place that was only like a mile away from our house that we could stop in for just like, 
just like bread or milk if we really had to. Uh, and so, yeah, for for Chris Williams, if we had that one hot dog left over, she would rather just drive and get a whole new pack of buns, even though they might not all get used just so you could have it done the right way. But oh, you were fancy people. We had to. My thing was, it's the last slice of the bread. It not only was it not a hot in a hot dog bun in my house, you got the end piece of the bread. It was tough times growing up. It was that or the saltine peanut butter sandwich. It's not. I mean, who doesn't love a good saltine peanut butter sandwich? But especially when your mother gives them to you to go to school wrapped in wax paper <laughs> that she doesn't understand, doesn't hold together in the bag. And so you just reach in and it's disgusting. It's not that we were Fancy. It's just that it's one of those things where I get you, it. You, Chris loved her kids. Sandy didn't. <laughs> if you want to eat a hot dog right, you got to eat it right. Like I, it even took me a long time before I would buy the Boston buns for a hot mm-hmm. dog because I was like, whoa, that's just a little too much exposed bread here. <laughs> I want my hot dog buns looking like buns all the way around. I am not lying. I was like, oh, no, this looks like bread that is folded in half. Thick bread folded in <laughs> half. I mean, it's a, I guess that's where I'm from. So maybe that's where it came from. I don't know. Uh, and now I love them. But did you to- do you ever toast them? Well, no, that's I, I don't. We don't buy hot dogs a lot at home. Like if it's BOGO at Publix, we'll pick up a pack of hot dogs. But for me, it's really. You know, if I'm at a barbecue at a friend's house, I'll eat some hot dogs. And if like if I'm at a ball game or something, I'll I'll get hot dogs. But I don't just uh, or if I'm at a restaurant like Skyline Chili again, I'll get hot dogs. But I don't just randomly say I'm hungry for hot dogs. I do. <laughs> I I came close the other day when we were shopping. I was like, what you if can I put them in an air fryer? Them? You can put them in the air fryer. What is up real nice? I think I think Eli is trying to fatten you up. For what I, I don't he, know. He has it in his head that an air fryer is the healthiest of things you could cook something in. And I'm like, wow, it still has the word fryer in it. So yeah. <laughs> it's essentially just a fast oven. <laughs> yeah. <all> like, <laughs> it crisps it crisp stuff up very quickly. So other than that, it's it's just the same. If, if the food you're putting in, if you're putting in French fries that have already been pre-cooked in in hot oil and stuff and you're just reheating them in an air fryer it's still unhealthy it's just crispy and tasty unhealthy food but uh oh so yeah (laughs) bread box (laughs) (laughs) i love bread box i do too good egg salad sandwich can't beat it i had the tuna melt too i believe was also very enjoyable i think that's what i always end up with over there yeah i've had plenty of sandwiches there you know i've had some of the basics i've had turkey uh, vegetable sandwich the uh, roast beef I, I you really can't go wrong with a sandwich but i'm also a sandwich man so but i like these they're it's a again like all the quick service places at city walk fair price uh great portion for it i like the entire atmosphere of bread box being kind of uh you know like a like a a very clean but classic diner in a sense so I really have nothing, nothing ill will or bad to say about Breadbox. It's it's one of those ones where I think I think of all the places I eat at at City Walk, I probably actually eat at Breadbox the most. Even though we don't do like a post every time I eat there for the show, because sometimes I go there just personally because I just want I want a quick sandwich, mm-hmm. and not a lot of places make a good sandwich, but. I, I love a good sandwich. Some There are days where I just like, uh, it's hard because Eli hates them. Like He just doesn't find them to be a, a good enough meal. And I'm like, I, sometimes that's all I want. I just yeah. want a nice sandwich and yeah. not like a sub, not whatever, just a sandwich. Oh, yeah. No, I'm, I would rather have a sandwich than a sub. I'm, I'm not, I'm a sub. It's just too much bread. It's, you hate bread. <laughs> I hate bread. I hate bread. So I, yeah, just too much bread. But bread box, always, always good. And that will wrap us up with our last one, Red Oven Pizza Bakery, which as of right now is the uh, is the place that I've eaten at second most to Voodoo Donuts since <laughs> City one Walk time. has reopened. I've I've now had in the past two weeks, I've had three pizzas from Red Oven Pizza oh, Bakery. Geez. So uh, two of them have been the prosciutto and arugula. And then one of the oh, mushrooms. So good. Oh yeah, that that prosciutto oh. and arugula is just 
divine. It's uh, it's not even my favorite one there. It's just one that Kylie actually will get to. So she's very particular about her pizza. It took until quarantine for her to realize that she actually did like pepperoni pizza. She is 30 years old. What? <laughs> You're telling me that she thought she didn't like pepperoni pizza? I am not joking. Oh, my. That's the go-to. That's the standard. When people are like cheese pizza, I'm like, why are you in my life? Yeah. Not to knock all the cheese pizza people out there, but cheese pizza for me is a treat, and I want to get exciting with it. So the standard pepperoni, a family favorite, bacon and onion. The newest discovery of in love of pizza in my family is the prosciutto and arugula one, too. My mom loves that one. She thinks that was the best thing that she ever had anywhere. She had it at the plant that market on Plant Street. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I, it's just it's prosciutto is delicious when it's when it is sliced thin and the arugula is fresh and crunchy in it. It gives off that that notes of lemon that just bring it all together. I I really really enjoy it but yeah no kylie just she never liked she never liked it it was always just i'll have cheese and then eventually i got (sighs) her to eat mushroom pizza when we went to (laughs) when we would go to mellow mushroom she would eat the holy shiitake and then we would also get the red skin potato which i don't believe they have on the menu anymore which is sad but and I mean, it's too far away for us to go anyways. It's it's a treat when we go out of our way for that. But uh, then, yeah, finally, we when I brought home pizza during the stay at home, I had to, I was like, all they had was pepperoni. And so I and that was with the frozen pizza and she ate it and she was like, this is the greatest thing ever. Like, <laughs> of course it is. It's pepperoni. It's salty. It's tasty. It's just it's it's uh, it is a pizza. A cheese she pizza tr- is not pizza. Oh, we we had like linguisa pizza and everything back home too. Oh, I missed that. I remember that was like the uh, pizza I went to go order when I moved here, and pe- they were like, "We don't know what word you're saying." <laughs> like, oh, that makes me sad. I should have done my research before I moved to Florida. Yeah, you sh- you should have. So, which one's my favorite one? Uh, I'm looking at the menu for Red Oven because there's one that the fennel sausage one there is my favorite. It's uh, it's penna, mozzarella, ricotta, and then sweet fennel sausage on top with scallions and red onions. So it's like a, a fancy sausage pizza. And it is so good. It is so good. It's so good. So good. Rhino, when you come over, bring a pizza. Leave it God, on the I step. Pizza so bad. <laughs> Beer and pizza. So you're staying so away. Warm. Pizza. Okay, that is all the. Uh, well, this turned into a ninety-minute episode for talking about six restaurants. So, but you know <laughs> what? That's just what happens sometimes. So, uh, that's what we think about all of them. That's our thoughts and opinions. I obviously, I think you can figure out which ones we thought were worth going to, which ones uh, we didn't. I'm not sure where we landed on Burger King when all was said and done. I think well, we they, actually. I- yeah, they can they can read our dissertation on the Whopper on the uh, in the show notes. You'll find a link to that. I'm pretty sure by the like we kind of wrapped all the way around and ended up like low key suggesting that you should just go to Burger King and nowhere else. <laughs> I'm not I'm not positive on it yet, but I'm pretty sure that's what happened there. But uh, those are your choices for quick meals on the go. Some of them offering mobile order all at a very reasonable price, in my opinion, and uh, definitely a good option if you're on a budget when heading to Universal Orlando Resort. So that is it, Rhino. Thank you for the conversation. Oh, thank you for the Whopper. Mm, You're very welcome. So if you enjoy dining at Universal City Walk's quick service locations, let us know in the comments below. Let us know what what we what you think is the best options there. Let us know what we haven't eaten there that that we should like specific menu items like how you talked about the BK Whopper bar. How could you have not mentioned the fact that they have a, a chicken sandwich there, or I don't, that was the worst. That was the worst explanation I could have said. Uh, but you know, leave us that kind of comments below. We want to, we want to, we want to read what you like when you are dining at universal city walk. And of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the thumbs up button. And if you are listening to this, you can always uh, reach out to us on social media, 
and let us know what what you like. But uh, you can also, if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or Google Play, make sure that you subscribe if possible and leave us ratings and reviews. But for reaching out to uh, tell us what you think, of course, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Teleclaster. More more Twitter than Instagram, unfortunately, but uh, that's just that's just how I roll. But Rhino, what about what about you? Where can we find you? You can find me on the Instagram and uh, Twitter under Rhino1185, and that is R-Y-N-O-1185. There you go. And if you need any extra information, of course, DizUnplugged.com, home of our show notes page for the show and all the others on the Disunplugged podcast network. So thank you, everyone out for their, there for listening and watching. Thank you, Rhino, for the conversation once again. And we will see you again next week with another episode of the Disunplugged Universal Edition. But until then, remember, we still haven't changed the name and go to Burger King. Burger King.